Hi, it's Jonathan. Um, in our Fleetwood factory, I'd like to talk about our GM70 Hollander amplifier and amplifiers maybe a little bit more in general. So this was actually our very first amplifier and it is um, kind of symbolic or uh, this, this gives the, the whole tenor for all of the OMA amplifiers, which you can really think about as the heart of an audio system, speaker system. I'm purposefully showing you the, um, the underside of this amplifier because it's really so incredibly beautifully built. There's even more transformers on the underside here. I think, Doug, you built this one? Um, I'm, I believe so. Yeah, Doug um, does great work. Doug's been with us since like, you know, before day one. Okay, what's going on in here? Um, the tube sockets, for example, are carved out of solid blocks of Teflon for us. I don't know if these are, are, are the AL4, uh, they're not Teflon, the AL4 sockets, but all the components are as high quality as possible. Obviously the chassis is pretty nice looking too. Sean, can you give me a hand? We'll flip this over. Okay, this is all solid Pennsylvania walnut. All the amps in the classic line are, are solid Pennsylvania walnut with dovetails. And then quite often they have slate tops, which actually, here's, here's one. This weighs a lot. This is cut. This is actually stone slate that fits over the top. I'm not going to try and put it on because it's like that, that game operation. And I never was good at that. So, the amplifier is the heart of the system. It, you can't have great sound, you can have the best loudspeakers, but if you don't have a great amp, you know, you're not going to have great sound. So what makes a great amplifier? Um, with tube amplifiers, essentially, for us at least, it's either, you know, single-ended, which is most of our amplifiers, or it's push-pull. That's the, the topology. Uh, for how the tubes are employed. So you see that these, t these big tubes, which are Russian transmitting tubes, right, Doug? That's correct. Yeah. And these are, these are GM70s, and I believe this tube was a copy, um, or inspired by at least, the RCA 845 tube and the Western Electric 211. This is a big <laughs> tube triode, which has... Um, can give you a lot of power, but we're not interested. Trains going by. We are not interested in having a lot of power because our amp, our speakers are so efficient that they only use a couple of watts. This is a big amplifier for us. It was the biggest. It was designed by my friend Paul in Holland. It was named after him, GM70, the Hollander. Um, he really is, I think, the greatest amplifier designer that I've ever encountered, and I'm very fortunate that he designs for us. So th this amplifier uses these two big transmitting triodes, a single-ended, which gives the most beautiful... Sorry, I, uh, I took a break to have some uh, local Pennsylvania pineapple tomatillos while um, the... Um, camera people got their stuff together. So what I was saying is these GM70 tubes, these transmitting triodes, this is actually the copper plate version, which is not as powerful, but sounds better than the graphite plate. These are just unbelievably cool, amazing sounding tubes. We only get 18 watts out of this amplifier, but for us, 18 watts is, is a lot. But for, you know, regular audiophiles, um, people with inefficient speakers, which is almost everyone, they need hundreds of watts to get their speaker moving, and we don't. So that's one of the important things with our, our amplifier sort of philosophy and what we make. Really low power because it's designed for very high efficiency and, and usually horn-loaded loudspeakers. This amplifier is on three chassis, and that also really deserves some explanation. When um, 
sound went from mono, you bought mono records, mono recordings, to stereo, you had one amplifier and you had, um, you had one speaker. So you went to the stereo, you went to the, you went to the hi-fi store and you said, okay, I want to do the stereo thing. And they sold you a, an identical speaker and an identical amplifier to what you had. Now you had monoblocks. And the industry was super happy to sell monoblock amplifiers. But I learned from doing the Oswald's Mill tube and speaker tastings, and Doug was present for all of those, people would come from all over the world with the two amplifiers that they had designed and built and they wanted to hear on this big system that we had at the mill, which is kind of similar to what we have now. No one ever brought monoblocks. Every single person who was serious about building uh, amplifiers, which were usually triode uh, and usually single-ended, they would have the power supply on one chassis, and that's what this is. The slate's not on it, but this is the B plus supply. This is the signal chassis. So the signal's going through here. This is supplying power, the B plus power uh, to the tubes. This chassis, which is a half size of this, is the filament supply, and there's no tube on it. This is a solid state regulator, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you have three dissimilar chassis. We couldn't fit everything on one chassis. We couldn't even fit it on two chassis. But importantly, the, uh, they're, not, they're not symmetrical. They're not monoblocks because that's not a great way to do it. The best way to design a tube amplifier is to have a signal on one chassis and the power supplies to be separate. And so we're, we're an outlier in that regard, but that's, that explains hopefully why we have three chassis and they are not, you know, they are dissimilar. 18 watt single ended. This amp also has a uh, potential uh, remote control of, of, the, of the volume. And um, this produces the most, you know, exquisite sound. Um, and still has, has some real power. What happens with tube amplifiers, single-ended tube amplifiers, is you can make amazing sound in the two watt, three watt range um, with tubes like 45s, 50s, 10s, 2A3s. But if you wanna have more power, so you wanna have the system in a big room, as you go up in, in power with, with tubes, it becomes much more difficult to keep that kind of exquisite sound where you, you're listening and you just go like, this is mind blowing. And that's really what this is all about. Making stuff that you know does what it's supposed to do, but it's beautiful and it's gonna last forever because as you can see, we're building this to sort of a mil spec level. Um, and so this is the GM70 Hollander, our first amplifier we've been in production uh, for over 15 years with this this amplifier oh and all the transformers are custom wound i should say that's quite important they're all custom wound for us um, and um, silver um, silver output transformers